Earlier we looked at two indie games that made use of procedural assets to streamline the creation of game art. Now that you are more familiar with how digital assets in the Houdini engine work, let's take a closer look. So here we have um, Suki and the Shadow Claw. So Louise, in creating his assets, he had assets he actually originally built in another application, 3D Studio Max, and he brought them into Houdini to proceduralize them. So he wanted to create these bridges that he could use in his game, and he set up a procedural network to create the bridge. Then when he got into Unity, he was able to set up a bridge simply by controlling this curve, similar to what we've shown before. Now, the advantage of this is he might be creating many, many, many of these bridges within a, a game level, and they can all be done quickly using this workflow. At the same time, they also have the advantage that if he makes a change to the asset on disk, all the bridges would benefit from any changes that he made there. Here's another example of a fence, again built using this procedural approach. Here he is creating a, a unique fence for this particular platform done using a procedural asset. Now, what's important to note is things like the rungs and the and the um, the posts on the fence. They would be done using instancing. So there is a lot of efficiencies built into each of these assets, so that he gets exactly what he wants in the game. So, in addition to speeding up the creation of a level designer, there's some other advantages to going procedural as well. So here in this part of the game, notice that the, the dragon goes through these tubes. Well, one of the issues with the tubes is the character would only go through it if it was a certain radius. Now, if he's got 20 tubes in a game level, or 50 games tubes in a game, if they are all modeled individually, there's a chance that somewhere, somehow, the dragon won't fit. Something will go wrong. It isn't set up the way that you want. When you're using a procedural asset, those rules are set inside the asset, and therefore he consistently gets what he needs uh, to build the level the way that he wants. So a lot more consistency, um, Surface normals are set up right, UVs are set up right, um, collision geometry is set up right, and this gives you a lot of reassurance as you're working with procedural assets that your game art is going to do what you want it to do. Here we have Exxon with Ari and the Secret of Seasons. So in their case, they used Houdini to create some procedural sets. Uh, here's a staircase that they set up so they could actually control how long it is. Uh, they could control uh, how many steps that there are as well as do you want to bend that staircase or keep it straight. So these are these are kinds of things to model by hand. You know, it's not impossible, but it's a lot of work. And if you have a, a tool like this where you can throw a staircase into a game quickly, get it to the size you want, and it's going to work and be ready for game, uh, ready for the game right away, uh, that's a huge benefit. And these, uh, these developers have, have learned that and have turned to Houdini to help them achieve that in their work. And here you see uh, the character running through some of these levels uh, and some of the staircases built using this procedural technique. Now most of the examples we have seen so far involve the use of procedural assets delivered to Unity through the Houdini Engine plugin. Now let's take a look at a special set of game development tools that are available with Houdini that offer alternative workflows that don't necessarily make use of Engine. The game development tool set is a collection of high-level tools aimed to speed up game-related workflows in Houdini. There are a growing number of game tools being developed that range from UVIN to generating motion vectors from simulations. These tools are being created by game TDs working at side effects who are posting all their work on GitHub to share with the community. But the tools can also be accessed from within Houdini itself by opening up the game development toolset shelf and clicking on the update toolset button. Here we are going to look at a high res mesh pipeline that uses several of these nodes and a tool for turning pyro effects into texture sheets. The high-res mesh pipeline we're going to explore takes us from ZBrush through to baked out textures. Along the way, Houdini's poly-reduced node and game dev tools for setting up UVs will be used. So here we have um, a highly detailed model created in ZBrush. You'll notice it's made up of a bunch of different individual little bits and pieces, and those bits and pieces uh, all have a lot of great detail that we want to be able to bring over into the game while still maintaining a decent poly count. So the first step of that is using the, the GoZ mesh workflow, and that will allow us to bring the model in and load it up as a BGO file. Uh, that's a file format Houdini likes. Now once we have that, we can start to do things uh, to it, like for instance, let's poly reduce this, get a slightly uh, 
more efficient model to work with. Once we have that, we're going to put a tool from the game development shelf called Voxel Mesh, which is going to go in and start to take the little kit of parts that we have in the model and turn it into a, a unified mesh. We're still going to have several pieces, uh, but the main pieces will all become uh, a unified, unified piece of geometry. This will make it easier for us to uh, poly reduce it for game use and also texture UV it. Once we have this, we can crank up the voxel mesh to get as much detail as we need. Uh, then we will run that through a poly reduction again to get something a little more appropriate uh, for gameplay. And we can go push it a little further in terms of the reduction because, of course, we can use baking to get the detail from the original model back into these pieces. Now, we can also use some auto UV, which will not only cut uh, automatically figure out the seams on your model, but then uh, flatten out the UVs on that. And we're running these just like we did with the voxel mesh in a for each loop so that we can hit all the different parts. So there's one part with its UVs, uh, and then we can run through. Uh, the different parts as well. And here's all of them. So we put a UV layout to just flatten that all out. And this, you know, can be done fairly quickly. And then from there, uh, bake it out. So our normal maps get baked out and then we can build texture maps and so on on a low res mesh for use in our game. And here that same model is inside Unity and all the different tools that we used allowed us to bring this FBX file in and get this uh, highly detailed low res mesh into our game ready for gameplay. Next we are going to learn how to take this fireball, simulating Houdini, out as a texture sheet for use in Unity. Houdini is often used to create blockbuster effects and using the game dev tools, you will be able to use them in your game. So here's a pyro effect simulation created in Houdini and it's got a very focused camera on it that we're going to use to build our texture sheet. The game dev tool is a output node where you can assign the camera, assign the specific simulation node, set a start and an end, and then you can set it to render out very specific things, uh, like normals and emissions and so on. Render it out using the compositing section of Houdini, you bring that back and have it built up as a texture sheet. That's all built into the, the tool that we're working with. And then you can see there's a whole bunch of different information that's all available and can be used when you bring this over into Unity. Now to get this over into Unity, uh, we are supplying through the GitHub a special shader. And so the first thing you do is bring over that texture sheet shader um, and you can take that and begin to assign the various maps that were exported by that tool into here. The ramp texture could be done by hand, um, but we just did it quickly in Houdini. So there's our fireball using the texture sheet. And then we can go in and start to do things like play around with the fire emission scale. And this gives us a much more realistic look uh, to the fireball. So some pretty exciting opportunities as you can take these visual effects from the Houdini environment and bring them into Unity. Now that you have a good idea of what is possible, one of the first questions you must have is, how can I get started? Luckily, there's a great collection of learning material available on SideEffects.com. SideFX has a free Apprentice Learning Edition that you can download and use to develop skills to make you more comfortable with going procedural with Houdini. There's also a free PDF of the Houdini Foundations book, which will get you up and running quickly. The book is also available in a print-on-demand for a small fee. There are also learning paths and tutorial collections that will help take you to the next level. These include Kenny Lammer's Guard Tower lessons and lots of lessons covering the game development toolset. You can also join the SideEffects.com forums or the Think Procedural Discord channel where you can learn from other Houdini artists and TDs. Once you've decided to add Houdini to your pipeline, there are several options to choose from. Our commercial products include Houdini Core, which has tools for a wide range of environment and level building tasks required in game development. Houdini Effects has all of these tools, then add simulation tools such as Pyrofex, Bullet, Rigid Bodies, and Fluids. Both of these products can be used to run the Houdini Engine plugin in Unity, or you can get a separate Houdini Engine license for other artists in your pipeline that only need to load the assets you create into the Unity Editor. SideFX also offers tools for indies making less than $100,000 USD. This product 
has most of the same features as any effects, except for a few restrictions, such as a different file format that can't be shared with commercial customers. To learn more, visit sideeffects.com games, where we have posted a number of customer stories showing how AAA and indie game devs are using Houdini. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you now have a clear understanding how Houdini and the Houdini Engine can help you as a Unity developer create more dynamic art for your games.